services, Senate Government Operations, Wednesday, June 24th, I believe. Um, I think you're so, right. So what we're doing is um, we're going to do a, Betsy, if you'd like to do a, do a walkthrough now of what we hope is the final um, amendment that we have. And um, it was emailed to us earlier. And is it also on the committee webpage? Okay. Hello, for the record, Betsy Anras, Legislative Council. Thank you to Gail for posting draft number 2.2 .2 under today's date of S124. Um, at the, um, whenever the members are ready to take a vote on this, I can fill in whatever sponsoring mem members are going to uh, sponsor this amendment in line two. But essentially of how I've set this up is uh, I've incorporated, uh, you had approved changes yesterday and requested revisions. So I removed all the highlighting from yesterday's draft, which flagged for you new language. You've already addressed that language. So what's highlighted in this uh, draft 2.2 are places where you requested changes yesterday. So, so you'll see. Par pardon me for interrupting a minute uh -huh. here, but I'm on Tuesday's documents and handouts and I can't get to today's. Uh, refresh. I did. If, if you, I, I'm, it's up there. So I just went to it. So I know it's well, there. I, I know it yeah, is. I, I got there too. Um, okay, I'm going to go out and come back in. Okay, just go ahead, Betsy. You sure? Okay. Yeah. All right, so your first decision was on page from yesterday was um, on page one, line nine, that you would maintain the Commissioner of Corrections as a member of the Criminal Justice Training Council. So it was struck through. So it's highlighted um, without strike through so that the Commissioner of Corrections would remain a member of the council. And uh, I'm uh, just referring now, just started uh, looking at draft 2.2 of S124 that's listed under today's date. Right, and let's, um uh make let's deal with each one as we go through so that we're um okay all right so we're okay with that right right indeed yes right. Um, and sorry to interrupt madam chair just wanted to let you know since you can't always see all the screen i'm in the room approach is rescheduled when i'm gonna appear so oh. step back out again okay thank you um Anybody else out there have any comment about that? And I can't see you, so you'll have to say. <laughs> All right, let's move on, Betsy. All right, uh, we're still on the council membership. So on page two, um, your discussion yesterday was to have the executive, on, I'm looking at line 12, to have the executive director of the Center for Crime Victim Services appoint someone representing the crime victim services um, profession or someone who works in crime services. And, but then you had also discussed as a follow-up from today, um, this morning, you had requested um, adding an appointee of the uh, Vermont Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence. Um, that's addressed in M. You had also yesterday um, asked for the executive director of the Human Rights Commission to appoint someone, just in a person. So taking all of those together, those th three uh, representatives, I just use more general language to say an individual appointed by the executive director of Crime Victim Services, an individual appointed by the executive director of Human Rights Commission, and an individual appointed by the executive director of the Vermont Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, with the idea that those um, entities would appoint someone that they thought was appropriate for uh, the, the council membership. We Does hope that they work? would. What's that? Yes, Gail, I mean, Allison. The other one. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I guess I misunderstood our conversation yesterday with the uh, advocate from the uh, Vermont Network. I thought I understood that there would be one representative from the victims 
services well, and that the executive director of the Center for Crime Victim Services would be appointing that person from the uh, yeah, number that, of victims. That, that was the conversation yesterday. I then had an email from Chris Benno, which I forwarded to everybody oh, who uh, asked if they could have one on each person. I then forwarded it to Sarah Robinson to see what she thought and everybody agreed. You were the only one I didn't hear from on the committee. Because sadly I was meeting and I can't read emails when I'm meeting. I was impressed with all of you who can. Okay. So, got it. Okay. So is that everybody okay with that? Okay. Anybody out there in the ether world? Okay. You're muted, Betsy. Thanks. Uh, the next change is on line 18 of page uh, two, which is to have all three public members appointed by the governor. Um, the public members don't have a law enforcement connection. Um, the prior draft had uh, the three public members, but one appointed by the governor and then one appointed by the House and Senate apiece. Everybody okay with that? Anybody else? Okay. All right, moving on to the second amendment. I just am counting up 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I think this brings up the council membership to 19 members, just so you know. Okay. Yikes. If you run a good meeting, you can do that I, many people. I agree. And there'll be robust subcommittees. Mm -hmm. All right, so I am heading over to page three then. This is uh, section 6A is in regard to uh, requiring agencies to comply with uh, policies that are required under the council chapter and the collection of roadside stop data. <laughs> So yesterday's draft just focused on prohibiting an agency from sending a law enforcement applicant to the uh, academy for basic training if they're not in compliance with uh, roadside stop data collection and uh, any policy. But after further discussion yesterday, uh, the suggestion was that the committee agreed to was to say that what prohibition would apply to any of the council services. So this new language would say an agency would be prohibited from having its law enforcement applicants or officers trained by the police academy or from otherwise using the services of the council if the agency is not in compliance with the roadside stop data collection or the requirement to adopt, follow, or enforce any policy. And then relatedly, the other thing that you discussed was putting in a specific effective date when this would uh, start to take effect. So it would be on and after January 1 of 2022. Which I believe corresponds with the um, bill we passed out of judiciary. Um, is that right? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it was. In starting in January of 2022, um, they couldn't um, apply for grants if, okay. if they weren't in compliance. Okay. Uh, just related to this also is at the top of page four. So the language that you already had approved said that the council would adopt procedures to enforce the, these requirements. Um, but to add specific language to allow for a waiver, just to make it explicit that the procedures may allow for waivers for agencies under a plan to obtain compliance with this section. So an agency would not necessarily need to be prohibited from using the council services if they are in compliance with a plan that uh, would lead them to be in compliance with the policies and the roadside stop data collection. Committee? Is that your intent? Yes. Anybody else? I just got an email from Mike Sherling who said that he is double booked again, but that he's read the um, amendment, the changes, the draft, and he agrees with it all. 
Anybody else? Okay. All right. On yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. Still on page four, looking at lines 12 and 13. This was about the um, requirement to use body cameras in accordance with the LEAB's policy um, that they adopted in 2016. This is the effective date of this is January 1, 2022 again. The language yesterday um, on lines 12 and 13 provided that the council would need to incorporate the provisions of this section into its, I think it said basic and annual training. And yeah. the suggestion was to ensure that it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be limited to just the basic and annual training. It could be any other training that it provides. So this is just a more general way to describe um, the incorporation of the body cam policy into council training. Anthony? Yeah, I just have a question. I'm, I'm confused as to where we're at in general with body cameras. Did, did, did the Judiciary Committee do something about body cameras? I'm a little, I'm just not sure where we're at right now with that. So what Judiciary did is require their use by the Vermont State Police. It didn't go any farther than Vermont State Police. Right. The LEAB did a, a model policy that would have applied to everybody in um, 2016. This is saying that um, all other law enforcement, if they're going to use body cameras, have to, or that they should use body cameras, that they have to apply, that they have to comply with the LEAB um, policy by 2022. So we're not necessarily here saying that everybody has to have body cameras. Yeah, we we're are. Not, we are saying they have to. If if they get body cameras, they have to apply by, by the model, the universal or model rule. Use. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still confused. I'm sorry. Are yeah. we saying that the Johnson Police Department has to have body cameras? I, I'm sure there's a Johnson Police Department, but just in case. Yeah. Um, they have to adopt, follow, and enforce the uh, body, the policy. And that says the policy, if you read it, says that um, the, if, they don't, if they don't have body cameras, then they wouldn't be subjected to this because it says if an officer is given a camera. So um, we're hoping that more of them will, but this isn't necessarily requiring all, all of them to do it. It's just requiring them to, if they do it, to adopt the policy. Right, that's what okay. I thought. Yeah. But later on, we talk, not to belabor this, but later on, we talk about potentially like group buying of cameras, right? I think that later on, then we're talking about, um, are there uh, changes that need to be made here? Maybe the LEAB <clears throat> says that everybody has to use them. I, I don't know what those changes will be. Okay. Yeah. But I, I, sorry, may I ask a question? Yes. I thought, I thought that, um, that, that, that the Vermont State Police had a uniform, uh, had bought them for everybody, and that that was the only agency that had them for everybody. No, no, that is not. Uh, there are at least three sheriff's offices that use them, right. and I don't know how many. Um, I mean, Mark talked about that yesterday. I know, I understand that, that there are eight other agencies that have purchased them, but that, as far as I understand, the only agency that's fully equipped with them at the moment is are the VSP, as opposed to like all the sheriffs. All the sheriffs don't have them, just certain. Right, right, some, right. Right, right. but if they're going to have them, they have to adopt this policy by 2020. They have to, they have to follow this policy. All right. Are okay. we okay? Are we okay with this? Mm -hmm. I do think it likely, I mean, the, there is this future effective date of January 1, 2022. I mean, the policy is posted on your web uh, under yesterday's date. It does discuss the equipment when the officers who are assigned equipment must use it as directed. Um, so I think I don't know if that's the intent of the uh, policy that it's only in effect if you're issued the body camera equipment. Um, 
Well, if you don't supply, if you don't have body cams in your agency, then you wouldn't have any policy to, to adopt, right? Is, yes. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't comply with the policy if you didn't have a body camera, yes. Is the Judiciary Ooh. Committee working um, on this issue further about whether to require them? Or right at this point, it's just a requirement for VSP? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're so, left to deal with everybody else. So what, let me just ask, hypothetically, why are we not saying everybody's got body cameras? Well, I think that, I, I think they have That's to figure, I think there are some issues that they have to figure out that we've asked them to address later on, like um, the expense of buying them, how are they gonna store them? What is the retention policy for the footage? There are a right. lot of questions out there. And I think that if we actually, required them to start to have all agencies use body cams right away that they're, they're first of all even just the purchasing of them um so i think that we've tried to address that farther on in the in the one of the um kick down the can sections got it thank you Um, the next chain, are you ready to move on, Madam Chair? Is everybody ready to move on? Yes. Okay. All right, so the next change from yesterday is in that last section, uh, starting on page six. These are the reports back with recommendations. And I'm looking at page six, lines 16 and 17 um, to uh, revise the language from yesterday to eliminate reference to uh, law enforcement officers not acting as warriors, but just to do the the uh, request yesterday in the committee discussion was to say, in order to further define, in order to further the goal of defining law enforcement officers as community guard, community guardians, um, there or will be reports back. Or community gardens. Or community gardens. <laughs> they can be guardians of the gardens. <laughs> <laughs> Does that meet your your um, thoughts, Senator Colomar? Okay. Thank you. And Chris, you weren't with us here yesterday. So if you have any questions as we're going through this, um, pipe up. Okay, I'm listening. Listen, okay. listen and learn, thanks. Okay. Everybody else okay with, with that small change? Yep. Yeah. All right, and then just a little tweak there on page seven, line two, it used to refer to the LEAB recommending statewide standards for interviewing and hiring officers, and the suggestion was to substitute universal standards. Yep. All right, page seven, lines eight through 10. This is in regard to reviewing uh, examinations that officer applicants have to take. And I appreciate the uh, feedback from uh, Officer um, Patch. She, she's not here today, but um, I did be, sh I was sure to um, implement her feedback that the term recruit is not used in practice and that the preference is to use applicant, law enforcement mm -hmm. applicant. So I made sure to incorporate that change throughout and that you'll see that on uh, page seven, line nine. Um, this um, one other suggestion related to these exams was to be sure to include that the council would consult with relevant organizations and individuals in regard to these exams. So, and individuals was added. And then that this review would not only be for cultural sensitivities, but overall appropriateness, which might not um, relate just to any sort of cultural distinctions, but just overall appropriate examinations to take. And, and I also um, uh, just move the language a little bit around um, to make it um, clearer in reading. And I thank Senator yeah. Colomore for that. And does that look better the way that it is revised? Yes. So they would be reviewing law enforcement applicants, current written, oral, and psychological examinations for cultural sensitivities and overall appropriateness. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. As usual. Yeah, right. 
Okay, I'm at the bottom here of uh, page seven. And so this is in regard to a uh, review of the training that's provided. And the suggestion was to um, just kind of elaborate a little bit on um, officers contending with a person who might have a mental condition and recognizing that. Um, and the suggestion was to just revise the language that they would look at training um, in the areas of recognition of and appropriately responding to individuals with a mental condition. Allison? Uh, I know this may be a little fine tuning, but is it, aren't they referred to as mental health conditions? Not just mental. I mean, that's like second grade. We used to say, oh, he's mental. <laughs> uh, actually, I was sure to look back at the Respectful Language Act to, uh, uh, to help direct me on the best terms to use. And that term well, that was used was mental condition there. Okay. And I did get a note from Rob Appel that said that he looked at this and is fine with it. Oh, good. Yeah, I saw that. It's now that you've pointed me towards my emails. Okay. All right. I'm on page eight. And um, this is in regard, the new language is in regard to the structure of the council um, and the academy. And uh, the first change on line 13 is again to use the uh, updated term law enforcement applicants rather than recruits. Um, and then the suggestion from the commissioner that you had yesterday, instead of describing, for example, an internship at a certain place, to say that um, they would discuss whether training could be provided through experiential learning. Anybody comment? I like that. I love experiential learning. That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> OK. All righty. Um, number three is a revision to the language about uh, civilian oversight yesterday's draft uh, referred specifically to regional civilian review boards. This would just use more general phrasing uh, models of civilian oversight after uh, feedback from the AG's office. And so this would uh, add the AG's office consulting with the VLCT who had requested inclusion here um, and other interested parties to recommend the more general one or more models of civilian oversight of law enforcement rather than regional civilian review boards specifically and yesterday's draft specifying um, some of the things that they would be reviewing. I think, I think this is a great, thank you, Julio. I think this is good. Thank you, Senator. Anybody else? Okay. Mr. Thompson's here, I think. Yes, I think he is. I hope he is, he's always got good ideas. Thank you, Senator. Yeah, this language looks fine to us. Thanks. Okay. All righty. Um, on page nine, in regard to access to complaint information, um, the chief had suggested instead of the council here, uh, taking advantage of the new council advisory committee could be conducting this review um, in consultation with the Secretary of State since it involves Public Records Act issues. Um, added Human Rights Commission here because you had added them uh, up above in regard or, or in, in a similar place in regard to um, public records access. Um, and then saying more specifically and other interested parties in reviewing public access to records um, that relate to allegations of law enforcement officer misconduct and substantiations of those. And I would say that if in any of these, if the whoever it is that we're asking to do the reviews, if they limit their input from the people that we've named here, then I don't think they're doing their responsible job and in a way that is really inclusive so that they people should know that they have to talk to more than more than who we uh, defined here. Chris? Um, pardon me for interrupting. I'm getting Paige to go back to a program. Okay. See you shortly. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, Brian? I was going to say goodbye to Chris, but I also have a question. Um, yeah. So I just want to make sure, because I think this was the section that had, for instance, even though it might have just been 
implied, the uh, Vermont Press Association and the Broadcasters Association. So we've taken those specific examples out and just uh, included them in other interested parties. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then in regard to body cameras, um, this is again another public records access issue. So this would uh, require consulting with the Secretary of State who, um, who has oversight over that law, um, the Human Rights Commission, and then again, other interested parties about uh, recommended policies for responding to public records requests for body camera footage. And then adding also in uh, any recommendations about the length of footage retention and storage. Okay. Finally, <coughs> on okay. Page, oops, sorry. P page 10 is in regard to uh, recommendations on military equipment and just adding after an opportunity for community involvement and feedback that the LEAB would recommend a statewide policy on officers' use of military equipment. And I know, Brian, that you um, <clears throat> did feel that, and I'm going to um, do that in my report, that uh, there was concern that individual communities should make their own decisions. But I think that if you look at the makeup of the LEA board, it it is made up of people from every law enforcement um, association and agency and the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. So I think that um, there will be plenty of, of local input into the, anything that comes up. Thank you, Madam Chair. So where are we, committee? Let's vote. Good. Okay. All right. Can it be a committee bill, um, Betsy, or a committee amendment? It cannot be a committee amendment because you no longer have custody of it. I think there is a way. I think the Senate has permitted um, to say XYZ Senator on behalf of the committee. That might be possible. I could check with the Senate secretary if you prefer to do that. But we can just list all of our names. Yeah, yeah. that too. Which is pretty clear if they're all on there that. We just, we just need to check with Bray. I'm sure he'd like his name on there as well. Yeah. It's just that oh, once a, a committee no longer has jurisdiction, the committee can't, the committee, uh, can't recommend an amendment. Understood. All right, committee. So where are we? That was some good work. Uh, yes, you and you and Betsy Ann in particular did really super work, and all yeah. our witnesses have given us terrific feedback. I, I think it's, it took a lot of gobbledygook and put it all together in a way that made sense. It was great. Yeah, but I think that that the thing that really makes me feel the best about it is that um, we have done it all the way through, I believe, from the perspective of working together and not um, being adversarial or pitting people against each other. I think that that's um, because that often happens, especially on issues like this. I think that you can have people say them, 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 them. And so I, I feel really good about that. And I think that that a lot of that is the way Betsy drafts, and a lot of it is the uh, committee because you um, are, you yourself are not thinking in those terms. So, and I, I have to say, Madam Chair, I think a lot of it is just the moment we're in. Uh, I, I think that we aren't always rowing together, and and it, I think after the last three month and a half, I think. I think everyone is realizing and understanding and appreciating the need for some of these changes in a way they might not have six months ago, even. Well, I was <clears throat> I wasn't talking about just this right. this um, these amendments or anything. I was talking about the whole since we started this whole thing on law enforcement and yep. did our tours around the state and all all of it. Um, right. I know that Senator Pearson 
when we started was dragged kicking and screaming because he didn't think there were any issues around law enforcement access. But so I think that I think that this whole the whole process has been that way, not not just recently. But I think recently has underscored the need, particularly for some of these more recent changes and additions. So I think it's been great. And it's been a wonderful education statewide on law enforcement uh, for those of us who knew less about it before we joined Senate government operations. OK, does somebody want to I would make I'd make a motion that we adopt amendment draft 2.2 of S124 and vote it out favorably. It's the okay. amendment to, yeah, it's the amendment to <laughs> S124. It's the draft 2.2 of the amendment to S124. Right, right. And uh, so Senator Bray, I will get his vote, I hope. Uh, Senator yeah. Clarkson, yes. Senator Collimore. Yes. Senator Polina. Yes. And Senator White. Yes. Our our guide and troop leader. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be doing this at four o'clock. So Betsy, yeah. and if you can send me an unhighlighted copy, and then I will forward that to the uh Secretary's office, is that the way I do it? Yes. Yeah. And okay. uh, hopefully by then we'll have a 5 0 vote, but at the moment it's 4 0 1. Yeah, I think uh, I, I would boldly say include Senator Bray because he was here early and my sense was he was very much wanting to be included. I yes, agree. I would too. And also put his name on the amendment. Yeah. So um, it's offered from all of us. And um, okay, so thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all those people sitting out there that um, I see Sheriff Boniak is with us and Chris Piquel, Chief Piquel and Julio and, and oh, Sheriff Anderson and- Yeah, oh, Mark Anderson, thank you for all. Oh, we got even a thumbs up from somebody. <laughs> Oh, who was that? Edward Grossman. <laughs> All right. Anyway, great. Um, great. So, um, okay, I think that uh, we're done with this one. Yes, Brian, and you did um, a, uh, man, a fantastic job on those charters. Charters this morning. <laughs> Boy, I was really nervous about them. Stop, you were not. Um, <laughs> Can I just inquire, is this probably it for the committee for the rest of the week? Well, that's, I, I think there are a couple things that we could, should look at. Um, you know, the uh, pro tem told us to <clears throat> look at the, the CARES budgets, but there are ve there's very few in that that affects us. The EMS money is all in the health portion of it and the um, um, what else was there I had a couple a couple issues um, what the um, the way the and I don't know if we want to take some testimony on this so that we can make a recommendation but you know the way our our appropriations committee did the 16 million dollars for um, the municipalities yeah and when it went to the house what they did is they took the care that bunch of cares money and they gave it to certain amounts to different committees didn't didn't um have priorities for which committees it went to or anything but just divided it up and gave them to committees and house GovOps was given 10 million dollars I, I don't know what, I mean, the money for the municipalities was supposed to be 16 as it came from us, but they were given 10. So Sears said that they're looking to see where they put the other six. And what they came up with, I believe, and so I would, I, I think that it would be good for us to hear to see if we 
actually support this or not. I believe what they've done, and I'm not sure they're done, but they took 5 million of that and put it toward the digitizing program. Oh, that's great. Well, it might be great. I don't know if they're in the, it has to all be spent, remember, before December. So I, I don't know that what testimony they took in terms of whether they're, they really are ready to spend it all before December or- they must, they must have gotten testimony to that effect because they knew that parameter. I know, but I would like us to feel comfortable with it also. Right. And also then good. I don't know what they did with the extra five and is yeah. the digitizing and how they came up with five. I, I, I don't know any of it at all. So I would like us to hear some of that if we that can. Would be great. And then sure. I don't know if, if we want, we're all done with our bills. That is true. I don't know if we want to, um, we had talked about having Tucker and Betsy and I think they were just about ready to do that when all of this hit um, is do the the bill that um, Anthony and Brian you guys talked about it as the the big bill and put it on the shelf and pull it out when we need it yeah and I don't I don't know where the pro tam expects us to go with that if he I think it would be I think it would be a great idea for us to have that ready because what if the governor declares the emergency over on July 30th and then on September 2nd, he redeclares an emergency. We have to go through all of this again. And it would be really nice to have, have it ready so that all we had to do, and I don't think it would take very long because I think they had started putting that together. What do you think committee? Yeah, I, I think we could at least spend a day doing that. Yeah. We've got two days left, right? Yeah. But I also think that um, we could talk about it and then Tucker and um, Betsy could use the time between now and when we come back in August to put it together. We don't have to approve it before we go out before the end of June. Right. Right. We could kind of talk about it and figure out what we want in there and how, how it might work. Yeah. Okay. So let's plan on doing that tomorrow and hearing from somebody um, in house GovOps about the way they did that with the, with the money and here maybe from um, Carol Doss and Chuck Starrow. I think Chuck Starrow has been assigned as that group's kind of liaison with the legislature yeah. and hear from them tomorrow. And then um, on Friday, maybe we don't need to meet. Um, well, but I'm trying to start. What? Excuse me, Gwen. Hi, sorry. No, I was. Can you add Karen Horn to that list um, of folks because she's been following it, and I really haven't recently. So I know she was in uh, House GovOps this morning and yesterday about the 349. So um, I'll relay the message to her that maybe she should show up tomorrow when you are meeting, so she, you know she can weigh in on the municipal uh, money portion of it. No, we don't want her to come. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> course. Allison. So um, in August, I anticipate, hopefully, that we will have had more money from the federal government uh, for states and municipalities. So my guess is we will have serious uh, CARES Act money to deal with in August. I'm, I'm hopeful anyway. Well, I it just, we might, and if we can come back and we do, then we can deal with that then. But in the meantime, right. I would like to make sure that we're, we are okay with recommending with whatever we recommend to our appropriations committee around that 16 million, because I, I consider that ours. <laughs> right. And the uh, other thing I just want to let you know is your vote today in, on the amendment is 5-0. And yes, uh, I mean, Betsy Ann's gone, but Betsy Ann, oh, she's gone. She's here. Well, she's still she, here. You had so please make sure we add Bray. To the amendment yeah um so so that can, is that what we can do tomorrow then gail are we going to put that on the agenda as h349 or how do we want to describe it gwen you've been following it closer than i have i don't know is that what it is 
I, sorry, I had to unmute myself. What was the question? I'm sorry. Um, Gail wants to know if we're putting it on the agenda as H349. Is that the bill that yes, gives yes. the five million to the? Okay. Yes. Okay. That's what we'll do. And who would be the best person from HBO? Um, John Gannon, I believe, would be the representative. John Gannon would be the person that's been sort of carrying the torch on this. Okay, great. And the way I would put it on the on the um, agenda is I would put H three forty nine. S three forty nine. Sorry, S three forty nine. Oh, S three forty nine. Oh, because it went over. At, S three forty nine was our 10 the 16 million and now they've changed it mm. yeah okay got, got it got it okay so forget what i was going to say so if we do that and then we would so it have chuck starrow and uh carol doss particularly maybe andy yeah. michael whoever those then, people are that yeah did to come and then um and karen horn and john and, gannon and and the woman who has already spent so much money, I'm just forgetting her name, the town clerk who's already spent so much money uh, digitized. Well, a, a lot of them have. It wasn't That's Bobby right. Brindlecombe, was it? it yeah. Bobby. It, yeah. Bobby was very articulate about the money aspect of it. Yeah, I would just send out a note to all of those people who were here when we talked about the digitizing okay. and uh, uh, invite them. So and then partial as well then who tanya yeah yeah who just send it out and some of them may not see the need to come and we're certainly not going to take testimony from all of them and what we really want to know is we want to look at the the break the way the house has allocated the what should have been 16 million dollars and um and why they allocated it that way and hear from the digitizing people if they are ready and could even spend it by December. So, and if that's a reasonable amount. Thank, thank you, Chris, Chief. I think he's leaving Bye, us. Chris Patel. Bye. Thank, thank you all for the, for that ability to participate in the Betsy and for her clarity. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much to you. Yes. Have a good thank afternoon. You. Bye. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would do. And, and I have no idea of our schedule for tomorrow, if he's going to do it the same way that he did today. <laughs> but I would say maybe the first, we divide whatever time we have in half and do the, the uh, budget thing first and then um, send a note to Tucker and Betsy if they can join us to just talk about the the bill on the shelf or whatever we're calling that. Like the elf on the shelf? Yeah, Brian. So I just want to change the subject for two seconds. I just kind of reminder, Betsy has kindly just sent us the final draft of the amendment. And if right. we're going to take it up, you probably need to get that to Bloomer so he can post a link to it and then make sure that Tim knows that we can call it off the calendar. Again, I'm just thinking a process so we can actually vote on the whole darn thing today. Thank you. So um, what I'm sending is draft 2.2. Final. Final at, without any yellow things. Yep, and that's and what's I'm, coming to you. And that the and committee I'm, vote was five zero zero, and that you would be reporting it. And, uh, all I right. Think, I think that's enough. Okay, thank you very much for the reminder. So I did get an email from the deputy director saying that the Senate will be meeting twice. So per, twice per day through Friday at 4 p.m. with the extra session. Oh, so tomorrow we will meet again at four. So that's what it looks like. Again Hopefully Friday. we'll have from two to four. But we'll be meeting again at 12 noon tomorrow. I guess that's what we're I doing. guess. 
and Friday too, Gail? Um, that's what it looks like. I'm looking at the, taking a look to see if I can find. Uh, She's got to get two weeks pay then. <laughs> Allison, I thought you'd come up with that. So, I'm, restrained. I'm restraining myself. What I see on the calendar is that the Senate will meet at one tomorrow and also again at four tomorrow. Sorry, we're meeting at not at 12. One and four. One and four. And then on Friday, it's 11.30 and again at four. Okay, so tell me those again. I was sending this to Bloomer, I didn't. Oh, yeah. Thursday is what? Thursday is at one and four. Well, that's well, I, pretty dumb. Yeah, that, okay. that, maybe we can appeal that. You could write to Tim. That really screws the uh, afternoon committees. Yeah. And Friday is 1130 and four. Yeah, I, I would, if we could manage today at 12, I hate to say it, but I think we should do it the same tomorrow. Or even 11.30, because morning committees can meet at 8.30. They don't have to wait till we 10. Have, we did. We I know. Been. We didn't. Yeah. <clears throat> we did. OK. I'm going to send Tim a note about that. Yeah. And I think that's a great idea. All right, committee. You have, we have one hour and eight minutes here before we have to sign in again. And- um, did, did Vanessa send a new sign in? I bet she did. I yeah. don't know. Oh, already I, done. 